Welcome to Roslyn Chapel. As the wind blows, typical. Roslyn Chapel. Now, what do we know? We know that Sir William Sinclair, St. Sinclair in 1446, decided that he needed to establish an edifice. He was getting old in life. Age was catching up with him. And he wanted originally to build about where we're standing. So that's why we came outside the chapel. Further 61 foot, he wanted to make a gigantic cathedral type building. And where we're standing out front now would have been part of the nave of the church. And it was going to have a spiral so tall, so tall that you could see it in Edinburgh. Now we're talking 20 miles, 35 kilometers away. It never happened, but the St. Clair family dynasty over the years have maintained the church at chapel. It became their private chapel at worship and it took some 40 years to complete. Now, if you want to know what it should have looked like with the spirals on it, you'll see the restoration work taking place over here. And it's interesting to note that the colors on here are not the colours that you see on the chapel. You see some nice uh, reds and golds. You can see some of the golds showing up in the chapel here, in the walls, and they're very elaborate carvings. There's literally hundreds of carvings outside. Double bell tower, and behind the wall in front of us there, the western door, which is such a typical feature, is a magnificent choir. Uh, stall and orchestra and orchestra um, organ. Now this church has changed, is now part of the worldwide Church of England and it's been visited by the Queen a couple of times. She came as a very young lady with her father and in fact Queen Victoria was instrumental in preserving this very building. The building had fallen into repair it had been conquered, it had been burnt, horses had been stored in there, and you might see a door there. That was to get the horses in. Originally it had no stained glass in it, so when it rained it was wet inside and damp. And the stone absorbed the water and gradually started to break up. It was Queen Victoria that came on a visit here, because Barrowmole Castle, the royal family's treated home, is in the Scottish Highlands. And she came here and she decided that it was worth preserving. So set out preserving it. And that preservation work is still going on at the present time. It's a special program that's working on it at the moment to try and restore some of the carvings that are here. Because some of them have disappeared. They're finding new things in the chapel all the time. And it's got a crypt. Now we can't show you the crypt, we can't take photographs inside, but in the crypt, we've been down in the crypt, and that was where the stonemasons originally started to work on it. So we're coming around here now to get you a view of the side and the side door. Now just look at that for the intricate work, and one of the first things that they did to restore it was to put a steel roof over the top of it. Steel roof stopped the water coming down into the building and destroying a lot of it. But now we can see the reds and the golds coming up in the um, sandstone here. Whereas inside it's a grey concrete colour because back in the 50s the Department of Public Works decided to help in the restoration so they covered it with a wash, a lime or a concrete wash and that unfortunately contributed to retaining the moisture. So while it was done in good faith, it did not do the job it was meant to do. Now there's still room for new stained glass windows. If you look directly above where I am there, the right hand window is not a stained glass window. That's probably been saved. The last window was put in for the 7th Earl of St. Clair when he died. And that was in the crypt. 
So there's still room there, and it's still a family place of worship. In fact, during normal times, you go, can come 10 a.m. on a Sunday, and during British summertime, at 5.15 p.m., there is a sung or said Holy Communion, and we're looking here over the back out towards the crypt, uh, underneath it. You can see the original slate roof there. This is the countryside that was owned by the Sinclair family out the back. Well, I think from memory we're up to about the 8th Earl now. This is looking behind the main altar now out the back. But just look at that intricate stonework. The colour, uh, this piece is missing as you can see here. This is originally, this here would have extended down onto that plinth. Plenty of seating here, but over time some of it has deteriorated, but I can see to this day you can come on Sundays, still worship here, there's midweek services during the week, and little things like this are what, what they're restoring instead of having the car, carved sandstone here, it's broken away here, so that's one of the things that they're doing to restore it. Likewise there's a castle attached to it, and by around about 2024, you will be able to stay in the castle. Some people have been staying in the castle, but at the moment it's closed during restoration work. We're coming right, right around to the other side now, so you can have a look at this particular part of it. And it's great to see some sunshine out today. And where those people are standing down there inside is a whispering door, and it works. You talk in one side of the door, and if someone's whistling out the other side, Whispering. We just thought we'd show you that funny thing up there, it's the sunshine. Because this is one day in Scotland in the year and you have the sunshine, and that is the sunshine there. So, this magnificent building in the town of Roslyn, not spelt the same way as the Roslyn Chapel, Roslyn. And this is the whispering door here now. We'll show you the, oh, the whispering door is actually open. It was closed there a while ago, so this is the whispering door, as you can see, these people are going to close the door, so we can't photograph inside, so that's the whispering door, you can see some of the structures that are here, I'm not sure what the song probably says, don't photograph inside. Some chapel entrance, but yes, I've managed to open the door there. So you've got a little glimpse inside the chapel. But um, everywhere you look, there's carvings. They're quite unique. There's literally hundreds of animals, whether they be monkeys, giraffes, there's even carving of an elephant. And you can see the turrets there. Not the right name, but uh, you get some idea of just the intricate work at Roslyn Chapel. It's now visited by well over 130,000 people a year and that is contributing significantly to the restoration of it. I see a corner piece here that's been restored but it's an on ongoing job to keep the maintenance done so that these intricate carvings like this one here that are virtually sunk into oblivion are preserved and the whole building is kept safe. So this is Roslyn Chapel, R-O-S-S-L-Y-N, closest town to Roslyn, L-I-N, and if that doesn't show up, it does have a, its own postcode, this church. It's one church lone, not lane, L-O-A-N, and the biggest major city is Edinburgh, capital of Scotland. So it's not too hard to find. Do, do a little bit of research, but like I said, it's got its own sat nav postcode so that you can find it. It's open seven days a week, and they do have talks included in your donation towards the church, and they occur between three and five times a day. They're very, very informative. So we've just about gone around once give you some idea of Roslyn Chapel 
which to this day 2024 is a working church so let's complete the walk around now and that is a quick overview at Roslyn Chapel and that's one of a series of churches and chapels that uh, we're featuring on this world tour so whether it be only or wherever hit the like button come back and tell us about church Christianity or what the church may or may not have done for you and hit the like button subscribe to the channel and add comments